everybody, I'm Tom Vassa. Welcome to Best of Publisher Series. In this, we take a look at different uh, board game publishers and tell you my favorite games from that publisher. Today, we're going to take a look at a company called Matigo. Now, Matigo kind of came into my consciousness as the years went by. I knew some of their games, but I think the first game that really brought them to my attention was Giants. I took this game, which was a kind of a big sprawling Euro game, and I remember looking at the different uh, figures for each player and saying, wait a minute, each of these little plastic figures is a different mold. This was like a fascinating thing to me. I was really kind of mind boggled. And really that's become kind of a hallmark of Matigo is their production values are incredible. They really make a good looking game. They've had a partnership with Asmodee, which has brought most of their games to America. But I'll tell you, when Asmodee makes a game, uh, I'm certainly going to pay attention. They've even made some very deluxe versions of their games. Uh, two of which are actually on my list. So let's get started with number 10, River Dragons. Now, honestly, I didn't ever expect River Dragons to have a deluxe version, but River Dragons is a game in which you are trying to move across river with these pieces, and you do so by building planks, and you're trying to build these planks. The planks are of different lengths, so you can move your pieces across, and you're knocking other people's planks off occasionally. Of course, there's the deluxe version, which you don't need. The deluxe version's big, mega, and amazing. But just the moving across the river, it's a beautiful looking game. It's a simple game. It's a family game, fun to play, interesting, has a nice theme. Uh, just really cool game, River Dragons. Number nine is Room 25. Now, if you've ever seen the horror movie Cube, which is about people who were stuck in this big cube, but that's made up of smaller rooms that are shaped like a cube. Uh, it's not the most pleasant of movies, but it gave these people this feeling of hopelessness. How do we get out of this place? It's full of traps. That's what Room 25 is. You can play it competitively. You can play it cooperatively. You can play it with traitors. Um, and in this, there's, you're moving through this 25-room grid. The rooms can slide around. Some of the rooms are death traps. Other rooms are not quite so bad, but most are not pleasant. And trying to get out, figure out the way to get to the exit. Really a fun game. I think it's best played with traders. That's Room 25. Number eight is one of their most popular games. Another one they made a deluxe version of, and that's Takinoko. Now this one, I think some of the popularity is just that the theme is so unbearably cute or bearably cute because it's about a panda bear. And in this game, you're building uh, stalks of green, yellow, and pink bamboo and moving a gardener, chasing the panda away. The panda's running around eating bamboo. People are taking different actions based on dice. They are, have different card goals that they're trying to collect. It is a fantastic, what I call, gateway game, a game that people can get into the hobby because, again, the components are amazing. And we're not even talking about the deluxe version where they're just mind-blowing, just the regular base game. The components are great. you got this little panda running around in a gardener. It's just super cool game. Another one that's just easy to teach people and get them into the hobby, that's Takinoko. Number seven is one of the games from Manico that doesn't seem to get a lot of love, but I love it and I have it on my shelf. In fact, most of these games are on my shelf. And this one is Ultimate Warriors. Now, Ultimate Warriors, there's a bunch of fantasy beings, dragon, centaur, dwarf, goblin, etc. And they're fighting to the death. This game has a similar feel to King of Tokyo. But uh, in, uh, what you do is you have these, these people in this arena and... Each turn, everyone's playing a card, and these cards will determine who hits first. And you have the small people, like the goblin and the dwarf, who don't do a lot of damage, but at the same time, they're really hard to hit because they're so small. The dragon's big and has a ton of hit points, but pretty easy to hit. So it's pretty well balanced. There's not a whole lot to it other than let's just go hit the other people. Lots of fun. That is Ultimate Warriors. Number six was the game I mentioned that caught my attention from Matigo, and that's Giants. In fact... A new version, Giants 2.0, is coming out sometime in the future. But Giants was a game about Easter Island and about how the folks on the island got this stone, made these big statues, and then used logs to roll them across the island to put them in different spots. It's a fascinating theme. The components are amazing. And the gameplay itself was really good. It's a Euro-style game where you're trying to figure out the best actions and the most efficient way to get the resources you need and then roll these statues to the outside of the island. Just a great game. The next five games are just so amazingly good. Matigo is, when it comes to their, their top ten games of Matigo, they're like in my top games. Number five is Dice Town. Dice Town is just an amazing dice rolling game. You're rolling dice. 
that have poker symbols on the different sides of them, trying to get different poker hands. It's kind of like Yahtzee, roll some, keep some, roll some, keep some, till you get a poker hand and you're trying to get the best poker hand. But different poker hands do different things. You might be trying to get land in town, you might be trying to rob the bank, you might be trying to get gold nuggets, you might be trying to uh, mess with other players or become the sheriff. Has a very strong Wow Wow West theme to it, but also there's fun of everyone rolling the dice. It moves quickly, it's entertaining, has a great expansion for it that is Dice Town. Number four is Raptor. This two player game is a little abstractish, but amazingly asymmetrically balanced. One person plays a mama raptor and some baby raptors and the other person is playing scientists. They are trying to take out the mama raptor and capture the baby raptors. The mama raptor is trying to eat the scientists, you know, or have the baby raptors escape off the board. They have different cards. You are playing cards and flipping them and seeing the numbers and doing the different actions on them, trying to outthink your opponent. <laughs> really an excellent game, Raptor. Number three, Cyclades. Love Cyclades. This is a game that came with these big sea monsters that would... I was a little disappointed when I first played it because they kind of just showed up and did something and disappeared. But Cyclades, with the expansion of uh, the, the Titans expansion, suddenly there were these giant Titans walking around and it made this game, which already had a really cool auction mechanism and had some cool things, it made it a fantastic game. Cyclades would probably be number 10 without the expansion, but with the Titans expansion, is definitely up here to number three. A great auction mechanism, basically a, almost a light risk-ish style game with all kinds of cool things that can happen and big giant monsters and beasts. Ah, how could you get better than that? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Number two is Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar, we just played it in our live marathon last week. Captain Sonar is an unbelievable team versus team game. Plays best with eight players, four on four, one person's the captain, one person's the radio operative, uh, one person is the first mate, one person's the engineer. You play real time, moving it around. It's kind of like playing real time battleship, trying to figure out where the other team is. It's fast paced, it's furious, and it is phenomenal. I have never had this game go poorly. It is just so much fun as you work together as a team trying to get to the right spot. Captain Sonar. Great, great. Then number one, by a mile, is Kemet. Oh, do I love Kemet. Kemet's one of my favorite games. Uh, Kemet took the thing about cyclades. I liked having these giant monsters and kept them around. Kemet is a, is a uh, mythological Egyptian game in which you are, it's kind of like a little light dudes on a map war game where you have these armies moving around and you're going to get points through controlling different areas and attacking people. Everyone is equal distant from everybody else. You have big monsters, you have technologies that you can buy and go in all different routes and become more strong defensively or offensively or weird different things. There's special cards, great combat. I mean, there's literally, I can't think of anything bad about this game. I love it. Kemet. If you've never played it, you certainly want to try it. It scales well. Just a fantastic game and easily my favorite Matigo game. I'm always excited to see a new game from Matigo. This year I know they're coming out with another expansion for Kemet, another expansion for Cyclades. Um, they're coming out with more games I'm sure and I can't wait to see them. Their company is one of my favorite ones that when I hear Matigo I'm like, what? So anyhow, those are my favorite games from them. I can't wait to see what they do in the future. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell and this has been Best of Matigo. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.